Janet Neal of The Superb Woman. I'm so glad to have you here tonight. Tonight my guest is Jan Mercer Doms of Plum Alley and Six Figure Women. But before we get to Jan, let me tell you a little bit about me, Superb Woman, and about this exciting campaign that I have going on right now with Plum Alley, which Jan will be telling you more about as well. So my background is I come from corporate world, I've been an entre entrepreneur for many years, and through my work as an entrepreneur, I have been working with women for about 12 years now, and I have seen time and time again how when women take the time, to, they step back, they learn to figure out who they really are, what their values are, their strengths, their attributes, their gifts that they have, and their passions, that's when they become truly powerful. And that is what I call a superb woman. It's all about the be. It's all about taking the time to step back, to be yourself, not being that superwoman that's all about do, do, do. It's all about everything outside of yourself. A superb woman is a truly powerful woman who really understands herself and is putting that amazing power out into the world for the betterment of all. And that's what the superb woman is all about helping women to become this powerful being and to put that positive energy back into the world for the betterment of all. Because I don't know about you, but I think that the world could use a little bit more positive energy out there. And one of the things that I'm doing, besides this wonderful show that we've been doing every Sunday evening at 7 o'clock, and thanks so much for joining, but we're starting this campaign now called The Thousand Women Stronger. And my intention is to do empowerment classes for a thousand women nationwide who need to hear the message but can't afford to pay for it. And I would love your help with it. You can go to plumalley.co and learn more about the Thousand Women Stronger campaign. And I would love for you to donate. So to find out more about that, we're going to be talking with Jan. But before we get to that, let me tell you a little bit about Jan. Jan and I met, and we were just talking, I can't re really remember exactly when we met, but our paths have crossed many times at networking events. And, you know, I like to tell people how I've met my guests, because it's important to put yourself out there. You just never know who you're going to meet. And as you've seen, I have met just the most amazing, superb women. And I'm delighted to bring them to you, because they have wonderful stories that need to be told. And you can see from them, you know, I get so inspired. And these women um, give me the motivation to keep going. And I hope that they'll do the same for you as well. And Jan is no exception. Jan has a, also a corporate background. And then she switched over to being an entrepreneur. And she has been working with women in a lot of different areas. She has her own networking group called Six Figure Women, working with um, high potential, high earning women. And just recently has joined Plum Alley, which is a platform, as she'll tell you, um, to help women to entrepreneurs to raise, raise funding. And she's the managing director there. So Jan, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so honored and thrilled to be with you all this evening. Thanks. So, Jan, I heard you had told me that you started off, you came from Nebraska. <laughs> and now you are in New York City. So, there is a bit of a difference between, you know, growing up in Nebraska and now, you know, running uh, this um, crowdsourcing. A crowdfunding platform for women entrepreneurs. How did you get from there to here? <laughs> um, oh my gosh, Janet, that's such a good question. I, you know, think that for myself, I always knew that there was a much larger world out there and a lot of potential within that world. I grew up, um, as Janet mentioned, from Nebraska, and my family owned a chain of clothing stores. And so while other girls were playing house um, or playing with dolls, um, although I will admit I had a large array of Barbies and they all had very fancy clothes, my parents owned a <laughs> clothing stores in Nebraska and so as a teenager on snow days I would follow my parents around in the store and play store and then as a teenager I did everything from organizing community fashion shows to going on buying trips with my parents to doing all the visual merchandising to doing sales on the floor and 
you know, from that experience, I mean, I'll have to admit, I'm from a, a town of about 5,000 people, but what that experience taught me was that, yeah, <laughs> 5,000. Um, what that experience taught me was that um, my parents had their stores back in the day when, when customer service really meant something. And if you had a small chain of stores, in communities of under 5,000, 10,000 people, customer service really meant something. And really being genuinely nice and knowing how to connect with a customer and connect with their family and connect with the community because that was really important to keep driving revenue, to keep wanting them to come back. Um, when I was in grad school, I worked for Estee Lauder and I also worked in healthcare software. And then after grad school, I moved to Phoenix and worked in dermatology pharmaceuticals on the finance side. So my early, early career was on the finance side. And honestly, didn't necessarily feel like that was the right fit for me and found a lot of passion doing um, various volunteer activities for organizations in Phoenix, including Planned Parenthood, Arizona Foundation for Women, where I and some friends put together a uh, mentoring program for women that had experienced domestic violence, and became really passionate about that. And so left the corporate sector and worked in the philanthropic sector for 10 years. And on the finance side, helping to bring best business practices to sector. So worked with organizations as diverse as, oh my gosh, um, Girl Scouts in Boston, to Teach for America here at the national office, and then for the last six years, I was the CFO for International Planned Parenthood. And started at the same time launching a consumer relations and brand experience management consulting practice based upon the lessons that I learned in my childhood. Based upon going back to the basics around how do you be nice? How do you be nice from a very sincere perspective where you're really authentic and true to yourself? And build a consulting practice around that. Worked with Plum Alley over the summer, and as Janet mentioned, um, became a managing director for them just in the last couple of months, which I'm thrilled about because Plum Alley is the place for women who want to raise monies for their initiatives, for their ideas, for their projects, programs, companies, and even if you have a dream. And we can talk more about that too. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, and let's talk some more about Plum Alley because. I'll tell you a really interesting story of how I came to know Plum Alley. Um, I was looking to do some sort of a crowdfunding um, campaign. And for those of you who don't know what crowdfunding is, it's basically um, a project that's put out there, and they're looking for um, to raise funds through uh, friends, family, general public, um, you know, a different uh, methodology. So I was looking to do something like that um, in order to, as I told you, to allow me to uh, to do these um, programs. And was all set to go with a different platform. And that night I went to one of Jan's events, uh, networking events, and met a woman who I had no idea who she was. And then she gets up there and starts talking about how she works with this um, platform that's started by women for women and it's called Plum Alley and I thought huh I think I need to check these people out um, and I had never heard of them so um, how long has Plum Alley been around? Yeah Plum Alley was founded two years ago by Deborah Jackson who is a 21 year Wall Street veteran including time at Goldman Sachs and then Deborah became really passionate about um, trying to fill the void in terms of understanding how women lack the same access to capital that men have. And so she worked um, extensively in the tech sector, helping early stage female founded tech companies increase her access and opportunities for funding as an angel funder herself. And she started Plum Alley two years ago, first of all, for the first year, um, largely has an e-commerce site because she wanted to provide female entrepreneurs with an opportunity to be able to have a really nice, um, um, visually appealing, um, highly technological platform in order for them to be able to sell um, their products and um, items. And then became really interested in crowdfunding because she learned that men and women have very different levels of access to funding, no matter if it's crowdfunding or angel funding or VC funding. And she created Plum Alley as a crowdfunding program because she really wanted women to be able to have access and learn how to um, do all of the different elements that are required for a crowdfunding campaign because those elements are often 
also very relevant and very important if you then down the road want to raise larger asks, want to raise money from VC funders or angel funders, for example. And so we over the summer worked on um, Plum Alley 2.0, so a brand new website. Um, and Janet is one of our very special first cohort who launched her campaign just a few weeks ago on Plum Alley on the new site. And it's plumalley.co. It's a beautiful, beautiful site. We built in some amazing um, levels of assistance that you will not have from other sites. So we have checklists and helpful hints. And if you're a very linear person, you can actually there is an um, interactive part of the website where you can actually go and check off like all of the different elements that go into, for example, building a budget or how you think about your rewards or how you think about you know how you write your narrative, et cetera, et cetera. And then also what's really nice about Plum Alley and Janet, you can probably attest to this too, is that we actually answer the phone. <laughs> and so anytime you have a question about your campaign or you want to talk best business practices, you can pick up the phone and give us a call and we're happy to answer those questions and really brainstorm and help you think through so that you're positioning yourself and your campaign in the best light. Yeah, and, and I, I will echo that, that um, the support that I received in setting up my campaign was was wonderful. And, you know, I don't have any experience with the other platforms, but um, those seemed like, you know, I have no idea where they were even located. It's just like, <laughs> run another planet and, and Plum Alley, just there was that personal touch, which, which really um, helped me a lot. And I know that uh, that's the intention as well. Um, so I know you, you, you started to talk about that, the difference between men and women as far as funding goes. Um, so how do you see, you know, Plum Alley is created by women, for women. How do you see that, um, besides giving all these tools, uh, it, you know, bridging that gap? That's a really good question. You know, what one of the things that I think is really unique about Plum Alley is that um, the diversity of experience that we have on our team. So, for example, Deborah Jackson, 21 years on Wall Street, then was an angel funder herself, really prominent in the tech space in New York City and beyond. Um, I have <laughs> many, many different careers. Um, so I span, um, like we mentioned, cosmetics and apparel and um, pharmaceuticals and philanthropy and education, and the list goes on and on. Um, we have a political fundraiser who consults with us. Um, our tech team is amazing, both from the design aesthetic perspective, but then also all of the back-end programming that really makes a tech site really Really robust and revolutionary. Um, we have um, we cover also very diverse generations, so we're relevant for millennials, generers, um, which is really nice because we're not just a company founded by you know very very young people, but we really have deep experience. Um, I think Plum Alley honestly is an amazing way to establish yourself as a credible player in whatever your field is. So there's much research out there that indicates that a successful crowdfunding campaign can really launch your, your product or your company or your initiative in a very different way because what we're finding now is there are many VC funders and angel funders who are actually researching crowdfunding sites to look for successfully funded crowdfunding campaigns because those campaigns indicate that number one, you're serious, number two, that you're there's market demand for your product or your service. Um, and number three, that you know how to ask for money and that you're not afraid to ask for money. So Janet, one of your questions earlier was kind of the, the gender difference between men and women in our access to funding. Well, there's research that indicates that from a sociological perspective, women often don't ask for money and we don't know how to ask for help, <laughs> right? Because we tend to like to do things ourselves and asking for help is really very challenging. One of the things that I think Plum Alley does really nicely is that we start to have conversations around why, why does that exist? And we really help campaign creators to think about who their networks are, right? 80% of a crowdfunding campaign is going to come from your own network and 20% comes from organic growth. What we do is we help you identify if you think, oh my gosh, I know no one or I can't ask this person to help fund my charity one more time. But we really sit down with you and we think about who your networks are, both professionally and personally, and we help you tap into those in ways that where you're really asking for money and you don't feel like you're asking for money, which is really important. Um, so there's you know, a lot of opportunity with a successfully funded crowdfunding campaign. Um, and it also, research also indicates that men fund 
male founded campaigns and women found women fund female founded campaigns. I'm not going to say that ten more times fast. <laughs> and, <laughs> so if you look at some of our competitors, and when you think of our competitors, it's usually like Indiegogo or Kickstarter. Seventy-five percent of their audience is male. Their founding teams all male. Management teams all male. And when you look and you scroll through their projects, they're very, very male-driven. And so naturally, men are going to gravitate toward that site, right? When you look at Plumali, it's just the reverse. Seventy-five percent of our supporters are women, and women fund women-founded campaigns. And so there's a nice sort of movement that we want to build in the sense of um, um, enabling women and providing the platform for women to be able to take risks. Um, we work with solopreneurs, entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs, women who own businesses, and you know, literally, you can use crowdfunding for anything. You can use it to fund an idea, a program, um, a, a webinar series, a book launch. Um, if you already have products, you can test market the product. And you know, should I be producing this in orange or yellow? And you can test market to see what the market. Uh, the market tolerances, um, et cetera, et cetera. What I really take pleasure in is having the, the personal one-on-one -on -one conversations with women to really see over the course of um, planning and managing and executing their campaign how some of the things that they struggled with in the beginning, you know, whether it's around um, reaching out to their friends to ask them for money, to thinking about how do you, you know, kind of put a budget around something that you want to do, and seeing the progress toward the end of the campaign where they're really excited and the campaign has really picked up momentum, and they're really inspired and they really want their campaign to become something that's not just about a finite period in time, but where there's longer term, um, longer term viability for their project or for their, their company. Excellent. And uh, yes, again, the um, asking for money has been a very interesting process. Um, not something that I'm used to doing. And um, for those of you who are thinking of doing something like this and thinking, oh my God, I could never do that, I, I can do it now um, and could not before and really have gotten so much support, support from Plum Alley. Um, that's been really, really helpful. Um, and to your point um, about women um, not asking for help, um, not knowing how to ask for help, and feeling that we have to do it ourselves. Again, that's my whole definition, um, tied into my definition of a superb woman. You know, the superwoman is somebody who feels they have to do it um, perfectly, they have to do it by themselves, um, and, you know, do everything. Uh, so, enough of that. It doesn't work. And so uh, women who are taking these risks, um, who are you know, taking the time to figure out how to do this, really, truly are superb women. So Plum Alley is, I mean, you're a superb woman, and the organization really supports and uh, kind of helps mold and grow uh, the, the superb women. So kudos. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Janet. And I'm, we've absolutely adored and loved working with you, the entire team at Plum Alley. And honestly, your campaign is what Plum Alley exists for. Um, women supporting women and providing the platform for women to reach their fullest potential across all the different elements in their lives that really make a whole a holistic um, holistic world, a holistic life. So we're, we're very excited and, and thrilled and honored that you're on our, on our platform, Janet. And your video is amazing, so I encourage everyone after this call to go check out Janet's campaign on Plumelli.co because your video is amazing. Your rewards are so much fun. And it's been just, I mean, we, we love to see how much how much the campaign has grown. So it's please, um, please go to Janet's campaign and take a look. You'll, you'll love what you see. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. So <laughs> mine is, again, A Thousand Women Stronger. Look for that one. But Jan, tell about some other campaigns that, you know, either in the past or, or the kinds of things that women are doing now. Yeah, so we've had, um, oh my gosh, so it's hard to pick out just a few campaigns because for many different reasons we adore all of them. Um, there was a campaign in the past that was on the first Plumali site, which was a healthy water, healthy bottled water. Um, and she raised her first round of funding on Plum Alley. And fast forward, what, like, just not even a year later, and she's selling in, like, Whole Foods chains. Um, her water is called Rue. 
Um, and we're thrilled that um, the, the CEO and founder of Rue is a big advocate for Plum Alley as well. Um, we had um, another campaign who was actually all set to go and received a lot, this is in the first round as well, received a really a lot of really nice press and publicity around the launch of her campaign and um, received angel funding for it and actually uh -huh. did go through with the, the full duration of her campaign because, you know, her end goal, her um, dream was to get um, angel funding so she could actually launch and become something much larger, which she did. Right now we have everything from philanthropic organizations that are raising monies. Um, there's um, a, a project called Tropical Clinics, and it was started by a woman from Kenya who is now living in Princeton, New Jersey, and she raises monies to help send very much needed drugs over to a particular village in Kenya. And what she found is that the shipments that have already been sent have reduced chronic illness like you would not believe. So diseases that women had been suffering from for years and years and years, she's been able to cure in a matter of seven days. Um, and so she's raising money so that she continued to afford the shipments of medicines over to Kenya. Um, we have other women who are in the cosmetic space, women who are in the... Um, 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 there's a woman who has this really creative line of backpacks for children. Um, we have philanthropic ventures. We have um, a woman who is do doing a, um, uh, a box of the month, which is hosiery. And so you go through this personality assessment to determine what your hosiery personality is. And then for every box that you buy, then a box is donated. Um, we have women in film, women in media. Um, et cetera, et cetera. So it's it really that sort of diversity really rings true to the diversity that we really want to attract on, attract to Plum Alley. So again, um, no matter if it's just even a dream that you've been working on, or an initiative, or if you're part of part of a philanthropic venture, or if your company's um, consumer products driven, and you're a female and you're a woman-owned company, this is definitely something you should you should learn about. Even if you don't do a crowdfunding campaign, but just become familiar with the technology and familiar with the, the, the mindset behind it because it is something where there is so much potential. Um, there's research that indicates under 5% of female-owned companies actually get funded. And that, that um, from a dollar perspective, is under, um, like way under what you would expect it to be. Um, and so we, through crowdfunding, have the opportunity to really um, very well positioned female entrepreneurs and women owned businesses, particularly as we think about then, you know, what a successful crowdfunding campaign means. Excellent. Excellent. So you are helping women now on their path. Who's helped you on your path? <laughs> oh my gosh, that's a very good question. You know, I've been thinking about this one. Um, and you know what? I have to say that. I, I really believe that people come in and out of your life at specific moments in time during your entire life. Um, and sometimes those relationships are lasting for decades, and sometimes people just come in and out for different purposes and different reasons. I mean, I have to say there are so many people, men and, and honestly, I'm, whoops, I should say women and honestly men. <laughs> 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 who have positively impacted my professional development. So everything from, you know, watching my parents work together in the stores and seeing my mom as a very strong role model, just from the perspective of, you know, she, she had a career, she had a job. And there were, you know, many times when, you know, work came before other things. Um, but I really respect her and respect my father for, um, for making me the very independent person that I am today. Um, other people, you know, it's it's crazy when I tell people that I'm from Nebraska. And honestly, you all are kind of like in the the inner um, inner circle now because I don't say this to many people where I'm from. Um, <laughs> but you know, even even someone like Warren Buffett. So when people say to me, "Oh my gosh, I can't believe for you, you're from Nebraska," or "Where is Nebraska?" or "Do they have paved roads in Nebraska?" I say, "Yes, that's where Warren Buffett's from." <laughs> so there are many lessons that I've taken from Warren Buffett. Um, of course, Gloria Steinem, um, and you know those iconic sort of personalities, but then just you know everyday people. So through my networking group, Six Figures, um, it's a as Janet mentioned, a professional networking group for highly accomplished women, and I literally have had over a thousand face-to-face -face conversations outside of all the networking events that I do, but I've had over a thousand coffees, um, lunches, breakfast, cocktails, dinners with the women in the group over the last two years, and honestly, those are the women that really inspire me. I think that sometimes we forget that 
ordinary people like ourselves actually have accomplished so much. And sometimes we only hear, and this is true for women and men, hear from the, the you know what's happening at the top, but all of us have extraordinary lives and all of us have things to celebrate and lessons to you know to, to help other people with. And that's really honestly um, where I take the most inspiration is just hearing the wonderful things that women are doing. Yep. I totally agree with you. <laughs> yeah, and a thousand um a thousand coffees and lunches and you know talk about putting yourself out there but but that really is how you learn and grow and and um, get the blessings along the way um, so Jan what what's next for you I mean you just started Plum Alley um, what's on the horizon um, you know personally professionally what's <laughs> what are you looking for <laughs> Well, let's see. For for six figures, we are rolling out the membership model in 2015. Um, so there are a lot of really fun, exciting things happening in association with that. Um, and we'll be growing to other cities as well. Um, Plum Alley. It's. I mean, we really want to become an international movement for women to have. For Plum Alley to be really the go-to place for women to get access to capital, and to be able to shift the dialogue and shift the conversation to one where um, we're really breaking ground in overcoming some of the things that we were talking about earlier around asking for help, taking risks, um, taking calculated risks, of course, um, and actually also celebrating ourselves. And I see a crowdfunding campaign as a way just not to promote something, um, but a way to celebrate yourself and to celebrate your own accomplishments, too. Um, so Plum Alley will continue to grow. Right now, we're building a base of what we're calling Plum Alley Leaders, and those are women and men in various communities across the country right now who really believe in what Plum Alley is doing and want to be a part of the larger movement. So we're coming up with some really fun and innovative ways to build collaborative relationships um, between Plum Alley and other individuals who want to help spread the word, um, other um, organizations, corporations, associations, et cetera, et cetera, as well. Wow, that's very exciting. And so for people who want to um, to find out more about Plum Alley, what, how do they do that? Yep, so you can go to our website, which is www.plumalley.co. Um, if you type in accidentally com, um, plumalley.com is a Chinese restaurant that actually looks pretty good, um, but no <laughs> Go to plumalley.co, C-O, <laughs> and you can um, email me additionally at jan, J-A-N, at plumalley.co, and I'd be happy to have additional conversations, talk to you more about crowdfunding. Um, if you go to the crowdfunding site, the Plum Alley site, and you scroll down to the very bottom of the landing page, you'll see like more information and um, or about Plum Alley, and you can click on either of those, and that will give you some really nice information that we spend a lot of time crafting around just what is crowdfunding, why could Plum Alley be right for me, and how crowdfunding is really changing the way in which women have access to capital. That's and also, funny. make sure you take a look at Janet's um, Janet's campaign, <laughs> A Thousand Women Stronger. <laughs> Yes, definitely. Thank you for that extra plug there. And at the end of this, you'll see a slide that has all the information, Jan's email address, plumalley.co, in case you forget how to spell it, um, <laughs> and my Thousand Women Stronger campaign. So we are just about out of time here, Jan. I just want to thank you so much for joining us tonight, um, for sharing your story and you know how you're helping um, women here in this area and soon to be um, nationwide, uh, globally, indeed. So thanks so much for being my guest. Thank you. Thank you so much, Janet. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> and join us next week. Next week, my guest will be Janice McLeod. I know I told you that she would be on earlier, but we had a couple of changes because I wanted to uh, take advantage of having my sister, who just ran the marathon, be on last week. Um, so Janice McLeod is going to be on. She's the author of Paris Letters and is an amazing woman who is a wonderful example of how you set a goal and it is that seems unbelievable and how you can absolutely achieve it. How she went from working in advertising in LA to becoming an artist in Paris and falling in love. So don't miss that one. It'll be a fun, um, a fun conversation. So until next week, have a wonderful week, 
And remember, be a superb woman. Thanks.